Well, welcome to your life group. I'm so excited that you've decided to join us for the next 12 weeks or so on this discipleship journey. You know at the Ransom that we exist to set captives free. And this opportunity, this discipleship journey, is an opportunity for you to live free and achieve one of our core values. It's our hope that over the next 12 weeks or so, whether you're in an R3 group or a topical group, that you have the opportunity just to engage in that discipleship process. And a disciple at the Ransom is somebody who can recognize and respond to the voice of God in their life and who teaches others to do the same. So over the next 12 weeks or so, you'll have the opportunity to do just that, to recognize God's voice, to hear him speak to you, to respond in the actions that you take both individually and as a community within your group. And maybe even invite somebody to come along with you in this journey. Of course, you'll have the opportunity to worship free with those around you, both in worship and in your life group. You'll have the opportunity to live free by digging deeper into God's word and to study a bit more. You'll also have the opportunity to serve free in the communities around you and through some various projects that we're excited to tell you about in the upcoming weeks. I'm so excited that you're here, so excited that you've decided to sign up for a life group, and I hope this next 12 weeks is a meaningful step in your discipleship journey as you follow Christ. So welcome to your life group. Enjoy the ride. Well, just a quick side note, if you're in an R3 group, each week your life group leader is going to bring a discussion based on the sermon from Sunday. And you may have noticed when you walk into a worship service at the Ransom that you're handed a hub connection. And in there, there's a space for you to take notes on key message points and even jot down some of your additional ideas. We encourage you to fill that out each week and bring it with you to your R3 group. This is going to help us to remind ourselves of what we heard and to go deeper as we discuss each week's teaching. As a matter of fact, each week there's going to be a special question from the person delivering the message designed for your life group and designed to help you go deeper. So come prepared to your life group, bring some notes, bring some questions, and be ready for an awesome discussion. Just a reminder that R3 stands for the method by which we're going to be structuring your life group experience. That we rewind to the teaching from Sunday, that we reflect on what we heard said and what we hear God saying, and that we react together as a group and individually in our actions. I'm so excited that you've joined us for this semester of R3 groups, and we're excited for where God's going to take us. So I'll be back with you in just a few minutes with this week's R3 lesson. Hey everybody, welcome to your R3 group, your first R3 group of the semester. I'm so glad that you joined. It's going to be a wonderful time as we dive deeper into God's Word. This Sunday, uh, we launched a new series called 2020, where we're looking at the core values of the Ransom Church. In other words, what are those things that define us as a church? The things that we would die for, the things that make our heart beat. We call these core values, and at the Ransom, we have three of them. We worship free of inhibition, we live free of sin, and we serve free of self. And everything that we do as a church is defined by these three core values. So I had the privilege of launching our series with a sermon called Worship Free. In order to do that, we looked at the story of King Josiah in 2 Kings chapters 22 and 23. King Josiah was very young when he became king. In fact, he was only eight years old. By the time that he was 16, he had already started to take the land of Judah and bring it back to God. You see, the place had become overrun with idol worship because of previous kings and other nations around them. But this young Josiah, by the time he was 16 years old, said, you know what, there's something wrong here. We need to bring our land back to worshiping the one true God. And so one of the first lessons that we learned through King Josiah is that he worshiped regardless of what everyone else was doing. And the one word that we would attach to this is that he worshiped with boldness. And then we continued on in our story, and, and we found out that as they were renovating the temple, they discovered the book of the law that had been lying dormant for decades. They read it, and Josiah was immediately heartbroken, and he went to the prophet Huldah to ask what they should do. I wish I could say that Huldah gave a good prophecy, but she really didn't. She essentially said, it's too late. Babylon is knocking at your door, and God is going to allow Babylon to conquer Judah because of all the wickedness that had come into the nation. But what's interesting is that Josiah even after hearing that, still cleansed the land of its idol worship. The second lesson that we learned from Josiah is that he worshiped God regardless of what the outcome may be. You see, regardless of what his circumstances were, he recognized that worship is not about our circumstances. It's about who God is and what he's done. And so by the end of the sermon, um, I just challenged everyone to identify those altars in our hearts, those high places, those areas of our lives that haven't been given fully over to God yet. And we came up front and we wrote them on little altars and then we just smashed those altars just like King Josiah did in our story. And it was a powerful moment. I thank everybody that participated in it. So there's your rewind for today. Now have a great discussion.
Well, welcome to Reflect. This week we talked about worship, and worship is about recognizing the truth about God. That he's worthy of our affection, our honor, our everything. And tonight I'd like us to worship just a little bit differently. So you're sitting around a room with people, some of them maybe strangers, maybe some of them you've known for a while, but all of it's based in a reality about where we stand with the people around us. And as we talk about worship tonight, worship is based in reality. It's based in identity. Remember when Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4? He begins to bring in a lot of the reality of her situation, specifically her marriages. And she gets uncomfortable with that reality and she tries to turn the conversation away to something that she's more comfortable with, like religion and the place of religious worship. Jesus doesn't buy her bait and switch. Instead, he says that, you know what, worship isn't at all about a place, it's about a person. It's about an identity. In John chapter 4, verse 22, he says it this way. He says, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. Jesus confirms that worship is really about identity. Paul says the same thing in Romans 1.25, but he does it a bit differently. See, he says that worship is about what we do know, and sometimes the people around us are more comfortable with what they can see and touch and feel as opposed to our Creator who's unseen. In Romans 1.25, he says, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and they worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator who is praised forever. Amen. We worship God because he's revealed himself to us. And the only appropriate response to God revealing himself to us is that we worship him. So tonight we're going to do a little bit of a group activity. We're all going to take some time to reveal ourselves, just a little bit. I'm not asking for your deepest, darkest secrets or for that thing that you've never told anybody else, but I am asking you to let your hair down just a bit. And here's why. When people know you, they know how to love you. They know when you need a hug or when you just need a little bit of space. They know when to step in or when to back off. But most of us around our groups are largely strangers. We haven't met each other before, or maybe we have, but it's just been a little bit of surface conversations. And in order to hear what God is saying to us, we need to know each other. We need to know each other in the context of a relationship. See, if worship's all about identity, then one of the ways that God teaches us about who he is is in the context of community through the people sitting around you right now in this room. And in order for this semester to be successful, you have to reveal yourself just a little bit so that people know you and can respond to you and love on you. So that they can be the voice of God in your life, helping you through difficult circumstances and to help us all to grow deeper as we pursue Christ. So tonight, that's your job. That's your mission. Reveal yourself. Let people know who you are. Let people in just a little bit. God revealed himself and it's the reason why we're able to know who he is and why we're able to have such a deep relationship with him. So reveal yourself tonight. I hope that it creates a meaningful culture and context for our continuing weeks together as we step in to hear more of what God has for us. Enjoy your time of fellowship tonight. Mm -hmm.